Hello and welcome. The fate of the Indo-British corridor depends most on a good High Commissioner. Well, joining me now is none other than the much-travelled James Beaven, British High Commissioner to India. Mr. Beaven, thank you very much for joining us today. So, first question, uh, if you were to look back at the last three years that you've been in India and the last six months in specific, what would you say are the most salient points? I would say fantastic. I think India is a wonderful country. I've had the privilege of travelling to every one of its 29 states now and it's made me a big believer in India. If you ask me about the, the last six months or so, I would say that the uh, opportunities are really exciting. It's an immense market, it's got tremendous potential, hugely talented people. Uh, growth is 5.7% uh, in the last quarter, that's the highest growth rate for two and a half years. Business confidence is up and you've got a new government here in India which wants to transform the economy. So it's a very, very exciting time to be here. Well, the Indo-British partnership has obviously been on sound economic footing. What are the kind of prospects you see ahead and what needs to be done? Well, absolutely. There's always more that can be done. I, I do think uh, it's right to say that um, the UK-India commercial partnership is a very important part of, of uh, the Indian and the, and the UK economies. Um, British companies are the single biggest investors in India. Uh, British uh, Indian trade last year was over 16 billion pounds and it's rising and the British government is a very strong supporter of the economic reform program that Prime Minister Modi has launched. But absolutely, can we do better? Must we do better? Yes. And the reason for that is that uh, trade investment between our two countries is driving more jobs, more growth and more prosperity for all of our citizens. So that's, for me, job number one is to increase our trade and investment further. Right. What, what are the new opportunities that you're seeing on the Indo-British Economic Corridor? And tell us more about them. The first thing to say is that in, in Prime Minister Modi's goal of transforming India, uh, I think that Britain can play a really important part. Uh, so India needs capital for investment, and the place to raise that capital is the city of London. Um, India wants 21st century infrastructure, and British companies have got great expertise in that area. India wants uh, energy and the biggest single investors uh, in the Indian energy sector are British companies. And India needs to skill um, 500 million young people for the workplace and, and British education is the best in the world. So I think there's already a very uh, close fit between what uh, Britain can offer and what India, India needs. Uh, with regard to new opportunities, I think you're right. I think um, infrastructure, um, manufacturing, biotech, uh, defence, all of these are great examples where Britain has something to offer and India wants to make progress. And I think those are very fruitful avenues for, for partnership in the coming years. How, how would you place the Indo-British partnership in the context of other relationships both countries have in an environment like this? Well, uh, my Prime Minister's answer to that is very clear. He places the uh, India relationship with Britain right at the top of uh, his agenda. That's why he's been to this country three times since he became Prime Minister in 2010. Um, m there are many things that bind us together. Obviously, the trade and investment relationship is, is at the heart of, uh, of that. But uh, the people-to-people -people links that we have, the ties of history, the ties of culture, all of those things make for a particularly special bond between our two countries. Um, that doesn't mean that it's an exclusive relationship, of course. Um, India has relationships with every other country in the world and, and that's in its own interest and, and so does Britain. Uh, but I do think that uh, the common values, the common language, the shared heritage and the, the natural fit between our two economies offers particularly fruitful prospects for the bilateral relationship over the coming decade. Well, you tried to predict what the world would look like in 2020, which is just six years away, and this was in 2006 when you were in Harvard. Tell us what's changed, and more so in the context of some of the complex geopolitical developments that we've seen. Well, I think uh, the, the lesson I learned from trying to predict uh, the future is don't try, um, because uh, it's incredibly difficult and you usually get it wrong. Um, I think what I did successfully predict uh, all those years ago was that uh, the world of 2014 would be a, a more turbulent, a more uncertain world than it was, and I think we've seen that to be the case. Uh, I also predicted, I'm happy to say, that uh, India would be a rising power in the 21st century, and it is. Um, and I think what, what I draw from that is that in an uncertain world, and we don't know what the world will look like over the next five to ten years, um, countries that think together, that have common interests, that have common bonds, need to stick together. And uh, that's why building a, 
a strong partnership between Britain and India, I think, is very important in this, in this uncertain world that we face. What are the kind of challenges you are seeing on the policy environment or the hurdles, including on the operational side? Well, I think the main challenge for India, it's one that Mr Modi, uh, your Prime Minister, has articulated very well, is to, is to make India a more business-friendly country. If you look at the uh, World Bank's uh, ranking, which they do every year, of the ease of doing business in every uh, country or 189 countries in the world, uh, India is at 134th place. And on some important issues like starting a business or um, uh, securing uh, legal certainty with a contract, it's, it's close to the bottom. Uh, and obviously that, that effect uh, will deter um, people from coming to India in a way that none of us wants. So I think uh, the biggest challenge of all for India and for this new government is to, is to make India a really business friendly place. And I think that what Mr Modi is doing will help achieve that, cutting red tape, simplifying the tax regime, uh, making uh, approvals quicker. Um, all those things uh, and more are important for making, making this a really attractive place of business. And if India does that, and I'm very confident that it will, um, the investment will pour in, not just from Britain, but from all over the world. And uh, the benefits for India in terms of prosperity, growth, strength will be huge. Could you tell us what are the one or two new things that you're seeing or new themes, particularly in the investment and the economic horizon? Well, one would be um, biotech. Uh, that's a sunrise industry in itself. India already has huge expertise in that area, so does Britain. And we're already seeing some very impressive partnerships developing between Indian and uh, British companies. Uh, a related area would be healthcare. Obviously, um, you have a huge population here in India increasingly needing um, different uh, new forms of healthcare. Uh, again, you have some great expertise in this country, but Britain uh, has it too, and we can partner together there. Uh, I think manufacturing itself, this Make in India program, uh, is a great uh, area where I will expect more to be happening in the future between our two countries, uh, in particular in areas like uh, aerospace um, and, and defence. So I think there's, uh, there's a huge future agenda. We already have a strong relationship, including in business, but I'm very confident that over the next five to ten years you'll see an even stronger, wider and deeper relationship. Finally, High Commissioner, you've been travelling a lot in India, as you said yourself. What's the one or two most memorable places or events that you saw that you like to share uh, with us? <laughs> well, the honest answer to that question is also the diplomatic answer, which is that everywhere in, in India, in every one of the 29 states, I have seen uh, amazing beauty, I have seen fantastic uh, heritage, and I've met some astonishing people. So um, my main takeaway from, from those 29 states and from three years is uh, a strong sense of uh, a great country, um, which is proud of its past, rightly so, but also very confident of its future. Uh, and I too am confident of India's future, and I'm determined that Britain will be a major partner for India in that future. Right, High Commissioner, thank you so much for speaking with us. Very good. Thank you. All the best.